Hi everyone, it's Miss Naima again. So welcome back to another class text video um, from the chapter book of Stick of the Dump by Clive King. So let's get reading again and please follow the class text with me when I um, read it with you. And we are on page 14. It was getting late in the autumn evening and it was already dark and gloomy in the pit. Barney knew there was a grey arch right at the other end of the pit, and by going a long way round, he could get back to the house. There were rustlings in dry leaves and muffled sounds from the middle of bramble patches, but somehow Barney found he didn't mind. He felt the hard stone in his pocket and thought of a stick in his den under the cliff. He weren't likely to find anything stranger than stick wherever he looked. And, well, stick was his friend. When he got back to the house, his grandmother and his sister Lou were just coming in from feeding the hens. Where have you been all the time? asked his grandmother. I went to the chalk pit, said Barney. All by yourself? exclaimed Lou. Yes, of course, he said. What have you been doing? his grandmother asked. Well, I fell and bumped my head. Poor old Barney, said Lou, and laughed. But it was all right, Barney went on, because I met Stick. Who's Stig? they both asked together. He's a sort of boy, he replied back. He just wears rabbit skins and lives in cave. He gets his water through a vacuum cleaner and puts chalk in his bath. He's my friend. Good gracious, exclaimed his grandmother. What funny friends you have here. He means he's, play he's been playing caveman, Lou exclaimed helpfully. Stig is just a pretend friend, isn't he, Barney? No, oh, he's really true, Barney pro protested. Of course he's true, his grandmother smiled. No, Lou, don't tease Barney. Let's pretend Stig's a wicked wizard who lives in a cave and turns people into stone. Lou began eagerly. She was always inventing stories and games like that. No, said Barney quietly, feeling the sharp flint in his pocket. Stig's nice, he's my friend. Night, he kept the flint under his, under his pillow and thought of Stig out there in the pit sleeping on his bed of bracken and old newspapers. He wished he lived all the time at Granny's house so that he could get to know Stig. He had to go back the day, the day after tomorrow. Never mind, he'd fit, visit Stig in the morning. <laughs> Digging with Stig It was a fine autumn morning and the grass was very wet with dew outside. Barney pushed his breakfast down as fast as he could manage. What do you want to do today? His grandmother asked as she drank her coffee. I have to go into the Seven Oaks this morning. Do you want to come? Barney's heart sank. Going to Seven Oaks? Well, it was all right if you had nothing else to do, but he had to go and see Stig. No, thank you, Granny, he said. I don't think I want to go into Seven Oaks. You'll be quite happy just messing about here, asked his grandmother. Yes, thank you. I just want to mess about with... With Stig. Oh, I see, Granny smiled. With your friend Stig. Well, Mrs. Pratt will be here all the morning, so if you like, you can stay with her. And with Stig, of course. Lou said she would like to go into the town, as she wasn't particularly interested in playing with Stig. Barney knew from the way she said it that she still thought Stig was only a pretend friend. But that was all right. If she didn't want to meet Stig, she didn't need to. Can I go out now? He asked. All right, said Granny. Pull your boots on. She called after him as, as he shot through the door. Barney's feet made dark prints in the dew as he headed across the lawn towards the chalk pit. Then he stopped and stood still in the middle of the lawn. Suppose he didn't find stick after all. The sun was bright. Yellow leaves fluttered down from the elm tree onto the grass. A robin puffed its breast on a rose tree and squeezed at him, and squeaked at him, sorry. Barney suddenly wasn't sure that he believed in Stig himself. It wasn't a stiggish day, like yesterday when he had fallen down the pit. He had fallen, hadn't he? He felt the bump on the back of his head. Yes, that was real enough. He'd fallen and bumped his head. And then what? Funny things did happen when you bumped your head. Perhaps you only saw Stig's when you fell and bumped your head. He didn't think he wanted to fall over the cliff again on purpose and bump his head again. 
Well, stick a person you could just go and play with, like the children at the end of the road at home. He had to find out. But he didn't want to go to the chalk pit and find nothing. He stood with his hands in his pockets in the middle of the lawn, his fingers playing with something hard in the left-hand pocket of his jeans. He remembered something and pulled out the thing he had in his hand. Of course, the flint. He looked at it glinting in the sunlight, like a black diamond with a chip pattern. He'd seen Stick make it. There was no mistake about that. Of course Stick was real. He set off again as we run, climbed the fence into the paddock, and waded through the long wet grass the other side. Pops round the edge of the chalk pit looked dark beyond the sunlit gra grass. In the middle of the paddock, he found himself slowing down and stopping again. Something at the back of his mind was telling him that he'd seen pictures of chipped flints in books and real ones in museums, and that they were made of thousands of years ago by rough people who weren't alive any longer. People found them and put them in cases with notices on them. Perhaps he just found this one and imagined everything else. And supposing he hadn't managed, he hadn't imagined stick, was he the sort of person who liked people coming to play? Well, he told himself, all he really wanted to do was to look at the place where he had fallen over yesterday. Have another look down the dump. There was that bicycle. Anyway, he walked to the edge of the paddock. A clump of brown grass jumped up from under his feet and bounced away toward the bramble patch showing a white tail and two long ears. Barney's heart bumped, but it was only a rabbit. He ran after it, but it had disappeared in the thick of the undergrowth. Feeling bolder, he climbed over the fence and ran carefully towards the edge of the pit, making sure this time that he kept near a big tree that seemed to be well anchored to the side and peeped over. He could see the patch of raw earth and white chalk where the ground had given way under him dangling creepers lower down and a scatter of broken chalk at the bottom. He craned over to see the hole he, ha he ma had made in the roof of the den. There was a pile of branches and rubbish against the foot of the cliff. No gaping hole. Not a sign of a hole, of a roof, of a den, of a stick. He listened. A blackbird turning over dry leaves in search of worms was making a noise much too big for itself. But apart from that, the pit was silent and empty. Barney walked away from the edge of the pit and climbed over the fence into the sunshine of the paddock, thinking hard. He looked at the stone in his hand. He felt the bump on his head. He had seen the raw patch where the ground had given way. He remembered crashing through a sort of roof and leaving a big gaping hole. And yet there wasn't a hole. Okay, let's just stop sharing the screen. And that is all your class text um, reading done for today. So what do you think? Do you think Stig is a real person? Or is it just an imagination of Barney in his head? Have a think. And um, let me know what you think of it. And tapestry so I can have a look of your ideas of what could happen next. If Barney thought it was his imagination in his head. Or if Stig was really a real caveman. Have a think and let me know on Tapestry. I hope you enjoyed reading with me today. Thank you for listening. Bye.